Today, guys, we're going to be talking all about mastering candles because candles give you the highest perspective, the biggest amount of context, whilst actually focusing on less information. So if you're ever overloaded, overwhelmed, or kind of wondering what's best and what's right and what's wrong, then candles are a really a really good way to simplify whilst also improving the odds of a system most of the time. And so this is basically going to be a part two to the video I made called Candle Wick strategy with great results. So if you haven't seen that, you're more than welcome to watch it after this video, but there's no need to watch it right now because I'm going to recap it very, very briefly so that you haven't missed anything. So what we spoke about in the last video was this, okay? We were basically referencing the last candle high or low and waiting for a confident close and hold of that level in order to confirm direction one way or the other. So for example, right here, we had a close below the previous candle low. We then held with this candle right here. And so from after this candle then closed, this was what we were looking at. And so we would consider this bearish. Now that's great and that works well, but there are a few things left for the imagination there. And that's what I want to clear up in this video. Specifically, how do we then begin dealing with consolidations when they happen? Those little nuanced scenarios of like, oh, it kind of looks bullish. It kind of looks bearish. I'm getting mixed signals. I, I, my entries aren't very good. We're going to be brushing up a few of those issues in this video. Okay. And so if we just look at this right here, and keep following this down. We have this candle high right here. Then we close below the previous candle right here, but we do not close. Um, uh, we do not close and hold, so we basically stay below it. So at this point in time, what's happened is because we've closed back within, the easiest way to think about it is we have this close, and then we mark out this low right here, and then this low, uh, this high right here. Okay. Now, the reason for that is because if we look and we imagine that this is closed, it tried to break below this first yellow line here and then close straight back above. And so we want to see the top and bottom of where that move happened, because it's the first sign of some form of indecision. Now, this will make more sense as we keep as I keep explaining and showing you the example. So just bear with me. So what I'm going to do is every single time we peak above this level, but we don't close and hold above it, I'm going to simply extend my line. So I'm going to do it as a kind of ladder effect first so that you can see this. So again, we move up here. Then we have a really small little peak above right here like this. Draw that from there. It's not perfect, but you can see it's slightly on that line there. And then we do the same thing to the bottom. Now, this is going to produce this ladder effect, as I mentioned. But why is this so significant? Why is this so helpful? For a few reasons. We don't need to go down to the lower time frame and guess or estimate why this is working or like, OK, is this the perfect consolidation? Is it meeting all these criteria? It is a simple way for us to filter out and define the noise in the market. But not just that, it also helps us to understand how we can trade it. OK, so I'll circle back on how to trade it in just a minute. For now, let's focus on just watching how things develop. Because ultimately, guys, remember, before we just move on here, price is either going up, it's going down. So this is a kind of an omnidirectional uh, sign here, or it's going sideways. And so because we only really have a directional possibility or a sideways possibility, before we were dealing exclusively with the direction, but once we understand consolidation as well, it adds the total framework that allows us to trade basically any condition, assuming that we are doing it in the right way. And so the only real differentiator between, okay, are we going up, down, or sideways is break of structure. It's understanding what a break of structure is, and it's also understanding the dynamics of the market. So what I mean by that in this case is <clears throat> right here, for example, if we just go and we see this break here, this is a close below the bottom of the level. It was also impulsive, which is very, very nice. However, we then close straight back above. We don't hold below that level. Now, in case you're not clear on the hold, I'll show you another example. Over here, we broke this candle right here, closed above the previous candle high. But then we held above that level with the next candle right here. And so this would be a break and a hold. And so right here, we didn't have that. We had a break down, but then we broke straight back above. Now, yes, that's not the best sign. But are there any other signs that we can take that we were maybe looking at a continuation here that isn't benefited by hindsight at all? Well, yes, because if we have a break, yes, at this point, it's not a solid break and that's fine. But if we just continue doing the same thing, 
not because we just randomly want to like continue doing this ladder effect, but because when we have wicks and show failure to break past particular can previous candle levels, then that is the sign of indecision, which is all I mean when I'm saying consolidation. And consolidation, by the way, can kind of tilt slightly up. You see how this kind of slightly tilts up. In this case, the overall consolidation tilts down, as we'll see in a minute, but or it can go sideways. But the main point and the reason this ladder effect is so helpful is because it shows you, regardless of which direction it's going in, exactly what the range you're currently in is, exactly what level needs to be confidently broken, which makes being systematic about it a hell of a lot easier. And so we see this, we fail to break below the previous candle low here. But then on the upside, we have this high right here. And then we begin the same thing that happened in our previous range. And we just begin building up this ladder here. Now we'll talk about how to trade this in just a second, but let me just mark this out. So we've got two ranges as a clear diagram, right? So we've got this that goes to here. And then we mark that low out until wherever that got penetrated. And then we got that here and then here. Okay, so right now, the actual range that we are in operates from here to here. In the same way that over here, the range at the end was from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom, doesn't matter. And so because of that, that gives us a few key pieces of information. The first one is if we're going to see a change in direction, right? We are going to need it to break and confidently pass this exact level. That's going to involve a close. It's going to involve a hold. We basically want to avoid situations like we've seen up here and down here where it just wicks or when it breaks above and breaks back down. Okay. And so <clears throat> there's a lot of information here. So let me just break it down into simple sections. A valid break of structure breaks, closes, plus holds. Simple as that. That's a valid break of structure. But probably more important is understanding what a false break of structure is. Because, yes, the obvious one is wicking above slash below levels. That's obvious. We all know that. But the less obvious one is going to be uh, closing above and then back in. So this is basically the breakout, uh, break back in type scenario. So I won't write that out, but it's basically if we have a level, just to show you the two types of uh, false breaks of structure. So if we have, for example, this, this would be your kind of typical wick, but we close below the level. The second one is going to be a confident close above, followed by a close straight back down below the next candle. And so it looks like we've broken above, but then we close straight back below. And the reason that this is still a false breaker structure is because if you looked at this scenario on a lower time frame, this wick, this would be the exact same as this. And vice versa, if you looked at this on a higher time frame, this would look the same as this. And so I read them the same. And so this applies when you're dealing with continuation or when you're dealing with a turnaround in price. So when we're dealing with uh, the actual direction, which is the next part of this, it helps us to understand which one of these and how much we actually need to, to basically uh, confirm our breaker structure. So for example, as we move into a range or a period of indecision, the most important thing directionally for us is how we moved into it. Here we can see that we had an impulsive bearish move into this consolidation, which means that I'm only focusing on selling during this consolidation. Just because we're consolidating doesn't mean we can't trade it. And in fact, I actually quite like trading consolidations. And the way that I like to do it is I like to do it every time a new ladder is formed or a new ladder step. So for example, here would have been an opportunity, here would have been an opportunity, and then here would have been an opportunity as well. Now, as we continue to move down, what what did we do here? Because this breaker structure wasn't valid. Yes, but we started consolidating. And this is a key thing that, I, that you need to understand in order to um, be able to practice with this, with your back testing. Okay. Um, yes, a consolidation shows us indecision because we don't know which way it's going to go. But one thing consolidation does show us is it shows us that at the bare minimum, we are more than likely willing to hold that level. And so, yes, we didn't break it according to our breaker structure rule, but according to consolidation, we were holding the level. And so because we then form that new range and we see that as soon as we essentially start forming this ladder on both sides, where we've gone up one above and down one below, 
at this point, I'm like, okay, we're now holding this level. And so I'm just still willing to trade this as bearish because I remember the momentum moving into it was bearish. The momentum before that was bearish. And so I'm just going to assume that the current momentum is going to continue until I get overwhelming evidence otherwise. Now, assuming that price didn't really change much from here, that would be a break, a confident break and close above and hold, sorry, above this level here and then i'd maybe consider looking at buys but until then i'm still very much on the sell side now as you get a little bit better if you want to you can start to get a little bit more intricate with this if you want you don't have to but you can start looking at the highs of candles within here and looking for setups within there if you want to however just be careful because the more complicated you make your system it's going to be harder to identify what's right what's going well what's not going so well um, but this has been a really, really powerful way for me to understand price, whether it's moving directionally, whether it's consolidating and giving opportunities in both of those environments. Now you can either do this with one pair, you can spread it over multiple pairs. At the end of the day, you need to take this idea, you need to backtest it on uh, in the past and figure out, OK, is this something that's working with my system? Uh, because you can either use this just as directional a directional approach it can be used as an entry approach um, but if you would like to see a separate video on the entry approach version then please let me know in the comments section below or anything else you would like to see uh, the more specific you are the more i can uh, help you and answer your questions so leave those in in the comments but uh but yeah if you'd like more help with this then i'd recommend checking out the one-on-one -on -one coaching or the course in the description box below uh, either way, it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, there's plenty of resources on my channel and I'm sure all over the internet. So, uh, so yeah, take advantage of them and I uh, hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.